Today our topic is state machines. So what is a state machine? Well, state machine is any system which could be electronic, electrical, mechanical, abstract, mathematical, whatever, uh, that has a number of different states. A state could remain an abstract concept or it could represent a certain number of combination of, uh, of binary variables in a system or mechanical state of something. So abstractly, maybe we would, let's say this is state one, whatever that is. And then over here is state two, whatever that is. And so this would be a state machine that had two states. And then we can transition between states in response to changes in inputs and or the current state. So maybe if we're in state one and the input variable A goes to the value of one, then we transition from state one to state two. Maybe if we're in state two and the input variable B is set to a logic level zero, then we transition from state two to state one. Okay, so this would be a very simple state machine that had two states. And then we also need to have outputs. Um, now those outputs could depend only on the current state. So here maybe our output would be that a variable Y would be equal to zero, and maybe over here in state two our output would be that a variable y would be equal to one. Now this is one approach where the output depends only on the state. We could also have outputs that depend on whatever triggers the transition. So these transitions might be associated with outputs. This is the basic idea. Now, in practice, all state machines are finite. So we have finite state machines. And that just means that they have a finite number of states. Okay, All real systems have a finite number of states, especially a digital logic system, because it, the number of the states, uh, you can't have more states than you have 2 to the n, where n is the number of bits. You could have fewer states than that, but you can't have more than that. Now, of course, that's in practice. Uh, theoretically, sometimes, Mathematicians will talk about infinite state machines. If you have continuous variables like x and y, or you know, which are, could be real numbers, then you could have an infinite state machine. Um, but we're concerned with finite state machines, and more specifically, clocked synchronous finite state machines. So as we've been talking about with sequential logic, we can have synchronous or asynchronous, and the synchronous types of systems typically are kept synchronous by the use of a global clock. So that's what we're gonna be interested in, clock synchronous finite state machines. So let's look at the basic architecture. We're gonna have some combinational logic here in one block and we're gonna have some memory in another block we'll have some input which will denote just by the letter a which could be multiple variables a0 a1 a2 etc we'll have output which will denote by the letter y and again that could have uh, multiple variables associated with it, y0, y1, and so on. The output of the logic block, there will be two things. First of all, the output of the system, which is y, and also an excitation to go into the memory, which we'll call d. This typically will be the d inputs, the d flip-flops. And then out of memory comes the stored values, which go into our logic block, and we'll call that q, typically being the q outputs of D flip-flops. And then there will be a clock associated with this. Okay, so that's the basic idea. This logic block is 
the standard combinational logic we studied in the first part of the course. Memory tip for us will typically be D flip flops, and that's probably the most common. And then inputs and outputs. So this would be a block diagram of a state machine. Now there's kind of two ways of t tackling a state machine. Number one is you're given a state machine with a particular configuration of memory and logic and you're asked to analyze it and look at the states and what things cost transitions between states and so on. So that's the analysis problem. And, and the other approach is when you have a problem which can be kind of put into this kind of picture of different states and transitions between the states and that would solve your problem and then you are asked to actually design that state machine actually come up with the logic and the memory configuration that will uh, implement that state machine and that would be the design problem now the state of the system we're usually going we're going to define to be the value of the memory, the Q values right, that are output by the memory blocks, the D flip-flops. That's going to be the state of the system. So this will be input of the system, output, the state, and then D, of course, would be the next state. D, and sometimes we, times we write that as Q star, the next state. The D inputs, which get latched at the rising edge of the clock and then become the next state. Now, as far as this logic block is concerned, we'll assume the output y is some logic function, or let's actually call it g, of the current inputs a and the state of the machine, q. And the next state, which we also call the excitation, what are the things that are going to go into the d flip-flops to become the next state, is some function f which can be a function of the current inputs and the state. Okay, so this is the block diagram for a general state machine, and then this would be the equations that would determine its behavior. Now, the most general architecture that we've shown here is called a Mealy machine, after the person that developed the theory of it. And a special version in which the output depends only on the state is called a Moore machine. Right, the the Mealy machine is more general because the output can depend both on the state and the current inputs. So that gets back to this picture here. So this would be a more machine because the output would depend only on the current state. If it also depended on the inputs, so maybe we had you know particular outputs associated, say with this transition, uh, and so on, then that would be a more general type of state machine called a Mealy machine. Typically, it's simpler to analyze more machines, and it's simpler to develop more machine architectures. But the Mealy machines, because they are more general, because the output can also depend on the input in, in addition to the state, are more versatile. And therefore, there's some applications where that's the preferred approach. Uh, but we're going to start off mostly talking about more machines. We're going to start with the analysis of a state machine, specifically a state machine circuit. So this has two steps and an optional third step. Number one, determine the functions d equals f of a and q and y equals g 
of A and Q. Of course, if you, you do that, you determine that G depends only on the, op the state Q, then you have a Moore machine, otherwise you have a Mealy machine. That's number one. Number two. Construct a state table, which is you know, a version of a truth table. Showing um, D and Y. All right, the this we call the excitation and why we call the output for all possible states and inputs. Now here's the optional third step. This can help because it's just easier to understand visually for human beings, draw a state diagram. Uh, this is a graphical representation. In fact, this up here, uh, this was a state diagram of a simple two-state machine. So being able to look at a picture like this can be very beneficial in many cases. Not necessary. That's why it's optional. Uh, but usually we will do that. So this is our state machine analysis uh, recipe, if you want to say it that way. All right, well, let's uh, give an example of this. Let's start with a circuit. So here we're going to have a circuit with an AND gate here. This has an input A1. Another input that comes from elsewhere in a circuit. And then that drives one of the inputs of an OR gate. And the other input of that OR gate is driven by another AND gate output. And that AND gate has an input A0. Then the output of this OR gate here becomes the D input of a flip-flop. It's a clock input. And here's the Q output and Q prime output. And that Q output is Y. Then that Q prime output is fed back to become one of the inputs to this second AND gate. And the Y output is fed back to become the second input of the first AND gate. Okay, so there is, and this is your D value, this is your Q value for the circuit. And there is your circuit. We want to analyze this. So first of all, let's ask, how many states does this, does this circuit have? Well, we said that the states we're going to take to be the values of the stored <clears throat> memory in the flip-flops, the Q values. So how many Q values can this have? Two, zero, or one. It's got one flip-flop. So generally, the number of states of the machine will be 2 to the n, where n is the number of possible flip-flops. So let's uh, do step number one. Determine d, which is also q star, the next state, is equal to f of a and q. What's it going to be? Well, d is the output of an OR gate. And that the inputs of that OR gate, there are two, they are both the outputs of two AND gates. So the first one is A1, and let's see, what is this? Uh, this is a Y, which is a Q here. So A1 and Q, or the other AND gate has A0 and not Q. A0 and not Q. Okay, that is your f of a and q that we could call the excitation function. Second, we have to figure out what is y is g of a 
and Q. Well, let's see here. Uh, this one is very, very simple. It's just Y is just equal to Q. So this is just a function only of Q. And that makes it a more machine. And so the output only depends on the state. So let's now make our uh, draw our, this is now step two, construct a state table showing D and Y for all possible states and inputs. So we're going to have, let's write the first variable as the Q, the state, and then the two inputs, A1 and A0. And then the outputs would be the Q star or the D and uh, the Y, the outputs of this logic block. Now the output of the system is the Y, but there's also the excitation output of the logic. Okay, so now we just go through all the possibilities, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, and so on. 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, and 0, 1. And we just fill in from this, this logic functions. Well, the easiest one is y is equal to q, so that's pretty easy. We just come 0, 0, 0, 0, and 1, 1, 1, 1. That's the output. q star, which is d, is not a1 and q. Okay. I'm sorry, a, a1 and q. Sorry, a1 and q. So a one's 1 and q is 1. So that would be these two entries down here where both a1 and q are 1 or A0 and not Q. So Q is 0 and A0 is 1. So Q is 0, that's these first four, and A0 is 1. So that would be here and there. And then you'd have zeros everywhere else. Okay, so that is our state table. Now, with that, we're done with our analysis of the state machine, right? That that tells you what it does. This you can figure out from any now from any uh, set of inputs A and current state Q. You can figure out what the next state will be and the output. But it can be useful now to do the third step: draw a state diagram. Well, this is going to have two states and the states are going to be determined by the Q value. And notice that the output Y is just equal to the Q value. So this is, we'll denote these states then and the outputs like this. This is state zero, Q is equal to zero, slash, and the output will be zero. And we have another state, which is state one, when Q is equal to one, and the output is one, so one slash one. If we had multiple flip-flops, we could replace this single digit by a series of digits representing abstractly a binary number and likewise for the output. Okay, and then we want to show the transitions. So when do we transition from state 0 to state 1? So we're in, we're in one of these states. When do we transition to the next state? Well, that's where the next state would be equal to 1. That would be these two cases. When is that? That would be this row here and this row. And what do they have in common? A0 is equal to 1. So we see that if we're in state 0, Q is equal to 0, and A0 is equal to 1, then the next state is going to be state 1. So we can write transition, draw an arrow like this, and say this is A0. When A0 is true, when A0 is equal to 1, we go from state 0 to state 1. Now in state 1, what causes us to go to state 0? So state 1 would be these, and so we could even, there'd be state 1 there, and up here would be state 0. So if we're in state 1, what causes us to go to state 0? Well, if we're in one of these four rows, when is the next state 0? It's these two rows here, and what do they have in common? Well, A1 is equal to 0. You can have A0 either, A0 or 1, but when A1 is equal to 0, 
then we go from state one up to state zero. So A1 is equal to zero. So that's not A1 would be equal to one. Not A1 would be true. So if you're in state zero and A0 becomes one, then we go to state one. If you're in state one and A1 becomes zero, then you go to state zero. Now that is, a, for me, a more understandable representation of this system than this table. It has all the information that the table does, but in a graphical form. Now a subtle issue here is that, let's say we're in state zero, and we said we transition when A zero becomes true, we transition to state one. Right, but our state table also shows that for um, here, when A0 is equal to 0, the next state is 0. Well, that's the same state we're in. But you could think of that as a transition to the same state. If we wanted to, we could do this. We could draw another arrow here, which takes the state back to itself. And that's when A0 is equal to 0. So that's when not A0 is true. And then down here in state one, what transitions us, if we're in state one, when do we transition to state one for the next state? That's here, these two rows. That's when A1 is equal to one. So we could draw that transition. A1 is equal to one. Now those, you could argue, are trivial transitions. Um, and especially since the output doesn't change, as long as we stay in the same state, the output stays the same. We can just leave those off, again, because they're trivial. Now, when we get into a Mealy machine, where the output depends not only on the state, but also the inputs, that's no longer the case. And we actually have to draw these transitions of a state to itself, because they may have different outputs associated with them. Okay, so that's a subtle point. As an aside, this state machine is another solution to our water tank problem. Remember that that water tank problem that we use to motivate the idea of a latch. So in the water tank problem, we had two sensors. Uh, H is zero if we're above the high line, and H is equal to one if we're below it. L is equal to zero if we're above the low line, and L is equal to one if we're below that. And we want to know when to turn on the pump to fill the tank. P equals one would be the pump on, zero is pump off. So if we associate it uh, with this state machine, if we say that P is equal to the output Y, which is Q, and we set that, uh, we say that the H sensor is A1, and the L sensor is A0, then notice that this solves our pump problem. Let's see, so let's say we're down here. The, we go down below, L is equal to one. All right, L is equal to one, that would mean A0 would be equal to one, and we would be here in this state where the pump is on. Okay, and then we go up above the line, uh, the low line, so L goes to zero. That would mean A0 would go to zero. Okay, well, that wouldn't affect anything. We wouldn't transition away. We would continue in the state where the uh, pump is on. All right, and this shows explicitly if A1 is equal to one, H is equal to one. We stay in that state, so that's whenever we're below the high level. As soon as we go above the high level, so H goes to zero, that means A1 goes to zero, then not A1 would be true, and we transition to the zero state, the pump shuts off. Okay. If we go down below the high level, the pump starts to drain, H goes to one, well, that means A1 goes to one. Okay, well, that doesn't transition us out of that state. Uh, so we continue then draining the tank, and finally we get to the lower level, water level, and we go below that, L goes to 1, A0 goes to 1. That means this would be true, and now we transition to the pump on. So we can see that this actually is another way to solve this 
a tank filling problem. And it's done now in terms explicitly of a state machine. Now let's take a look at another circuit. Here's our output Y. Got two inputs. Here's an exclusive OR gate. And that's going to provide the D input, the flip flop. Here's our clock. And Now the Q output is going to be fed into both this AND gate and this exclusive OR gate. Better. Um, and, and then we're going to have an input A here, which will also go up this top AND gate, and we've got a inversion bubble there, so that would be the not A as one of the inputs. So let's look at uh, this circuit. And let's let's see, there is, there's one input A, and then the state is given by the value of this single variable Q. So we've got Q and A, and then we need Q star, the D, the input to D, and the output Y. Zero 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 one one zero one one. So let's see what is the logic function for y here. Y is an and between q, so it's q and a not a q and not a. That's the y output. So q. It's one of these two rows and not A, so that would be right here. All the other possible the possible uh, rows in that truth table would give you a zero for the output. And then how about the Q star, which is the D input logic? That's the exclusive OR between Q and A. So either Q or A is one, but the other is not. So only exclusive OR, that would be these two rows here. There and there. Okay, so there is the state table. Now, notice the output is not a function of the state alone. In fact, it's Q and not A. So it's a, it's a function. This is now, if we go back up to our original notation here, the output is G is a function of both the input and the state. So it's a Mealy machine. And therefore, and when we draw our state diagram, we're going to have to include these trivial transitions because they may have different outputs associated with them. So let's do that here. So let's have state zero. It still has two states. Why? Because it only has one flip-flop. So there's only two values of Q. So 0 and 1 are two states. When do we transition from state 0 to state 1? So here's state, state 0 and state 1. If we're in state 0, what transition, transitions us to state 1? Right here. When Q is 0, A is equal to 1 will transition us. Okay, so we write this transition here. When A is true, then we go from state 0 to state 1. If we're in state 0 uh, and A is equal to 0, then we transition, quote, back to state 0. So we'll come back to that. Now, if we're in state 1, when do we transition to state 0? Here it is. State 1 to state 0, that's when A is equal to 1. Okay, so A is equal to 1 we transition to state 0. So we see in this, uh, this system, if we keep A at equal to 1, then if we're in state 0, we go to state 1, then to state 0, we just oscillate back and forth between, toggle between state 0 and state 1. 
Now, how about the output? The output is not a function of the state. Here's state 0, and, and the output is 0. But here's state 1, and the output can be 1 or 0. So the output is not simply a function of the state, but also includes the effects of the input. OK, so how are we going to represent this? Um, well, if we're in state 0, and A is true, and we transition to 1, that's here. We're in state 0, A is true, we transition to 1. What is the output? Should be 0. So we'll do this. We'll do A slash 0. So that's the input that causes this transition. And on that transition, we output a 0. Let's move this A over here, because we're going to do the same thing. If we're in state 1, and A is 1, state 1, and A is 1, we transition to 0. The output is 0. We're going to have a slash 0. So on either of these transitions, we output 0. Now what if we're in state 0, and we transition back to state 0? So we're in state 0, and the next state is 0. That's when a is equal to 0. OK, so that's when not a is true. And what's our output? If we're in state 0, and a is 0, we transition back to state 0, the output is 0. So we'll say not a slash 0. So that tells you the input that causes that transition and the corresponding output. And then finally down here, if we're in state 1, what causes us to transition back to state 1, that's this row. State 1 to state 1, it's a is equal to 0. Again, not a is true. But what's the output there? We're in state 1, and a is 0, so not a is true. The output is 1. So there would be our state diagram. And you can see that this is not a Moore machine, but it's a Mealy machine, because the outputs are not associated only with the states, but also with the state and the transition, which includes the input variables. So, Mealy machines, you have the state diagram is going to have this character that the outputs are going to be associated with the transitions, either from a state to itself or from a state to another state. Whereas for the Moore machine, you can simply leave off these trivial transitions of a state back to itself because the output only is a function of the state. You can just put that, those output values in the state boxes like this. So we had a couple examples of simple uh, state machine analysis. We're given circuits, we develop a state table, and from that we develop a state diagram. Now it can be useful, uh, in fact it, it's essential, in doing design of state machines to be able to perform state diagram analysis. So this is called basically going through the inverse set of steps we had, right? Our steps were for the state machine circuit analysis, right? We determined the, the excitation functions, constructed a state table, and then drew a state diagram. We're going to go in the opposite direction, start at step three, do step two, and step one. And then finally from that, develop a, after that, develop a, a circuit. And this is because the way we're going to approach solving problems with state machines is usually going to be to draw first a state diagram that seems to be a solution to our problem, and then work from there to figure out what the actual circuit would be. So let's suppose this is a state diagram we're given. Has a state zero, which has an output one, and has a state one, which has an output zero. We transition from state zero to state one. An input a is false, so a prime is true, and we transition from state one to state zero. If that uh, input a 
is true. Okay, first thing we can tell is this is a more machine because the output is only a function of the uh, state. Very well, so let's, uh, let's now, given this state diagram, form a state table. So we have, we see, we see there's only one input, A, and there's only one state variable, a Q variable, and that's, there's a single one here. And so we're going to have one value of Q, one value of A, and then we are, we're going to have the next state, Q star, that's the D excitation, input to the flip-flop, and then the output Y. So let's draw all possibilities, 0, 0, and 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Okay, so these two, this would be state 0, and these two would be state 1. Okay, if we're in state 0, our output is 1. So this is 1, 1. If we're in state 1, our output is 0, 0, 0. There's our output function. Now, how about uh, our next state, our excitation function? Okay, if we're in state 0 and A is 0, we transition to state 1. So if we're in 0 and A is 0, we transition to state 1. If we're in state 0 and A is 1, so not A is false, we do not transition. Or you could say either we stay in state 0 or we transition to back to state 0. So 0, 1, we go back to state 0 or stay in state 0. Now, if we're in state 1 and A is 0, what happens? If we're in state 1 and A is 0, well, we don't transition because we only transition when A is 1. So we stay in state 1. So 1 for Q and 0 for A, we stay in state 1. If we're in state 1 and A is 1, well, then then we can transition. We're in state 1. A is 1, so this is true. We transition to state 0. So there is our state table. What are our um, the various logic functions that we need, right? We need the uh, excitation function, D is, which is Q star, is F of A and Q. And the output function, Y is G, uh, for a melee machine, it would be A of A and Q, or for a more machine, just G of Q. Let's do that first, because that's the simplest, it would seem. We can say Y here is just G of Q. And what is it? When Q is 0, Y is 1. When Q is 1, Y is 0. So clearly that's just Y is not Q. Now for the excitation... Uh, our Q star is D equals F of A and Q. What is it? What is this function here? All right. Well, let's see. Um, well, if we look at the A column, well, we see an interesting situation. If A is 0, then Q star is 1. If A is 0, Q star is 1. If A is 1, Q star is 0. If A is 1, Q star is 0. So Q star is just not A. These are very simple functions. So what would our circuit look like? It would be a very simple circuit. Here's our flip-flop. Block. Q. And Q prime. Here's our D input. And what is our D input? It's just not A. So we put a not gate. A. Of course, we have our clock signal. And what's our output? It's not Q. Well, this is not Q. So there you go. There's our circuit. Very, very simple. Let's look at another example. We here state zero, and here's state one. 
And if we're in state zero, and the input A is zero, so that not A is true, we output the zero and remain in state zero. If we're in state zero and the input A is equal to one, so A is true, we output a zero and transition to state one. If we're in state one, and the input A is true, so A is equal to one, we output a zero and remain in state one. If we're in state one, and the variable input variable A is zero, so not A is true, we output a one and transition to state zero. So there's our state diagram. Suppose this so solves some problem for us. What is the state table? Well, again, we have two states, so that's going to be just one Q value. And it appears we have only one input variable, A, and one output, Y. So our state table will have a Q and an A and a Q star. That's the D excitation signal, the next state, and an output, Y. 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Let's see now, if we're in state zero, right, so this and this would be state zero, and those two rows would be state one. State zero and A is zero. State zero and A is zero, so that means not A is one. So we output a zero. Okay, so we output a zero, and the next state is state zero. Now let's see, for the next row, we're in state zero and A is one. We're in state zero and A is one. We output a zero, and we transition to state one. Now we're in state one, and A is zero. We're in state one, A is zero. Well, that would mean not A is true, so we transition to state zero, and we output a one. Finally, we're in state one, and A is one. We're in state one, A is one, and we transition back to state one. So the next state is state one, and we output a zero. Okay, so there's our state table. I'm analyzing our state diagram. Let's get the excitation function and the output function. Um, so how about the excitation function? Let's take a look uh, here. Uh, when Q is equal to zero and A is equal to one, then that function is one. And when Q is one and A is one, that function is one, okay? So we could say Q star is equal to not Q and A or next row with a one in the Q star column, Q and A. And of course you can factor out the A and then you got Q or not Q is always equal to one and one and A is just equal to A. So excitation function is just A. And then what about the output Y? Uh, we only output Y for this row. That's when Q is one and A is zero. So Q and not A would then be your, your output. So the output depends both on the current state and the input. So this is a mealy machine, okay, which is you can figure out because you can see that the output values are not associated with the states but with transitions, either from a state to itself or between states. What would be the circuit implementation? Draw our single D flip-flop. Okay, so our next state, Q star, which is our D, the D input, is just equal to A. So A, we just feed it right into the D input. Of course, we've got our clock signal. 
And how about our output Y? It is just the output Y is Q and not A. So we can take this output Y. It's going to be one of the inputs to a AND gate. Q and not A. So not A. We can take A here, put it through a NOT gate. And there we go. There's our circuit that implements this um, state table, which in turn is a description of this state diagram. So far, we've looked at simple state machines that have only a single flip-flop, meaning they have two states. Two to the one is two. What if we're given a state diagram that looks like this? Here's state one. Now, let me, let me get a little more space here. Here's state one. Here's state two, and here is state three. So this has three states. If we're in state one, there's a transition back to state one associated with S is equal to zero, W is equal to zero, state one. There's a transition to state two associated with S is equal to one, W is equal to zero. In state two, there's a transition back to state two associated with S is equal to one and W is equal to zero. And there's a transition from state two to state three associated with S is zero and W zero. In state three, there's a transition back to state three associated with S is equal to one, W is equal to one. And finally, from state three, there's a transition to state one associated with S is zero and W is equal to zero. So suppose S represents a switch and W is a warning signal. Okay. Uh, now, there are three states, but there are no variable names given that are associated with those, no Q values. And it would sound then like if S is a switch, uh, W is a warning signal, that would probably be our output. And because these outputs then are associated with transitions, it would seem then that this would be a mealy machine. Now we have three states, so we can't implement this with a single state variable Q. We need at least two. Two to the two is four. So we could represent four states. We only need three. That's okay. We can use fewer than that, um, fewer than the total possible number of states, but we certainly have to have enough bits to represent however many states we have. And we can specify the value of those uh, state variables. All right, so we're going to need to have a Q1 and, uh, say, a Q0 will be our two outputs. So we'll have two flip-flops. Again, with two flip-flops, we could represent 2 to the 2 is equal to four states, but we only need three states. Now, we can assign to these states values of Q1 and Q0 arbitrarily. For example, maybe we'll make this 0, 1, and, then, and state 2 will be 1, 0, and state 3 would be 1, 1. And those would just represent the binary representations of the numbers 1, 2, and 3. But we could have assigned these states in any way possible. This is another bit of flexibility we have when we're designing more complicated state machines that have... Uh, more than two states. And it may be, when we get to down to the actual implementation as a logic circuit, that there are some of these assignments that would be more convenient. 
it would lead to simpler logic. Okay, so that's a subtle, subtle point. So given our state diagram, let's fill out a state table. Now, just to kind of keep our notation consistent with what we've done before, um, let's assume this, this switch, S, which is a switch, uh, we're going to call A. We've been using A for inputs before. And the warning signal, W, that'll be our output Y. So here is our table. We'll have a state determined in terms of two bits, Q1 and Q0, and then a single input A. And then we've got our next state, Q1 star and Q0 star, and our output Y. Okay, so we've got 0, 0, 0, 0. 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Now notice, because we don't have a state corresponding to Q1 and Q0, both being equal to 0, we're not interested in these first two first two rows here right, or you could alternately you could replace these by don't care if you wanted to so this is not not applicable we start in row two and go on down from there okay so if we're in state zero one and a is zero what happens we're in state zero one that's state one okay so in fact let's label those this is state one. One zero, uh, that's state two. And one one is state three. We're in state one, and A is zero. What happens? State one, and A, which is the, the switch, is zero. We stay in state one, and the warning signal, the output, is going to be y is going to be 0. So we stay in state 1, which is 0, 1, and there's no warning signal. Okay, so state 0, 1, um, and a is 0. We, go, we stay in state 0, 1, and there's no output y. How about we're in state 0, 1, which is state 1, and A is 1. What happens then? So A, which is the switch, is 1. We transition to state 2, and there's no warning. We transition to state 2, which is 1, 0, and there's no warning. What if we're in state 2? All right, that's Q1, Q0 is 1, 0, and A is 0. We're in state 2, and the input A, which is the switch, is 0. We transition to state 3, and there's no warning. Okay, so we transition to state 3. That's 1, 1 for the Q values, and there's no warning. And if we're in state 2 and A is 1, so the input, the switch, is 1. We stay in state 2, and there's no warning. We stay in state 2, which is 1, zero and there's no warning okay now what if we're in state three that's when both q's are one and a is zero okay we're in state three and a is zero the switch is has a value of zero we go to state one and we output no warning we go to state one which is zero one for the q values and we output no warning and finally, if we're in state 3 and A is equal to 1, we're in state 3 and A is equal to 1, so the switch is equal to 1, we stay in state 3 and we do, that's where we output a warning. So the output goes to 1. We stay in state 3 and we output a warning. So there is our transition table. 
very well. Now we can work on figuring out our two functions, our output function. Let's do, we deal with that first. What is y? Um, well, it seems like there's only one row in our truth table that outputs a one. Again, these don't care as we could take these to be zeros or one. So if we take them to be zeros, this would just be this one row. And that's when Q1, Q0, and A are all equal to one. So this would be Q1 and Q0 and A. Now, what about the Q1 star and Q0 star functions? And let's put those on K maps. Yeah, I'm going to need a little more space. So we'll put here our Q1 and Q0 values. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. And over here will be our A for the rows, 0 and 1. Okay, so this is going to be our Q1 star function. So we have don't cares uh, in, remember, let's put the rows here, 0, 1, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Rows zero and one, we have don't cares. And then we have ones in, let's see, let's put the rows over here, so it's a little easier. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Uh, so we have ones in rows three and four, three and four, and five and seven so five and seven so that's what our k map looks like well let's see we can make a big block here and use this don't care let that be a one and this one be a zero and then we get this whole block there and then we also have that block there. So what would that logic function be? We would have Q1 next would be this, this bottom row there is just A, A is equal to one. So it's A or, and then this column is when Q1 is one and Q0 is zero. So that would be or Q1 and not Q0. That would be the logic function. So now let's uh, look at the K map for the other state variable. Okay, we did the Q1 star, now we're going to do Q0 star. So here's Q1, Q0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, uh, 1, 1, 1, 0, sorry. And then here's the input A. 0, 1, and this is going to be Q0 star, and 0, 1, these are the rows, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and 7, so let's see, the first two rows, 0 and 1, are don't cares, as before, and then we've got uh, a 1 in rows 2, 4, 6, and 7, 2, 4, 6, and 7. Okay, we can use this don't care in the upper left corner. Make one whole row like so. And then we can uh, do this column here to get the remaining cell in the K map accounted for. So we're going to have Q0 star is going to be. Okay, well, this top row is just a is equal to zero so that would be not a or this column well that's where q1 is one and q0 is one so that's not a and q1 and q0 
Okay, so what does this system look like? What is the implementation? So we know that we need two flip flops. And it'll have clock signals. We won't show connections to the clock signals. They would just be connected to extern an external clock. They have the D inputs and Q and not Q outputs. So what are the D inputs? Let's see. So let's make the, the top one to be the Q1 and the bottom one to be the Q0. Okay, so for Q, uh, Q1, we've got A or Q1 and not Q0. So there's an or there. So that means this must have, put this out a little bit. This has an or gate. And for Q0, it also has an or function. So I don't need to have an or gate. And that's got A for, for Q1, uh, A, and actually the, the D1 input for the Q1 star, A or Q1 and Q0 not. Okay, so there's going to be one of the inputs is going to be an AND gate. And likewise, for the Q0 star, one of the inputs is going to be an AND gate. So let's also put that up here. And for Q1, the other input to the OR gate is just going to be the input A. Let's see. Let's, uh, let's put that up here like so. And then for the uh, Q0 star, the other input to the OR gate is going to be not A. Let's put that, uh, put that down here. Put a not gate. Um, I might need a little more space here. like so. All right, and what are the uh, inputs to the end gates the, for the Q1 star? It's Q and not Q0. Okay, so this guy is Q, Q1, sorry, and not Q0. Okay, so this would be not Q0 over here. And this would be Q1 right there. So let's... Uh, Take this guy up here and have that go in like so. And then this would be the not Q0 would be this, this output here. That's going to be another input there. All right. So we got that circuit taken care of. What's this one? The other, the AND gate that goes into the or gate for the Q0 star, it's Q1 and Q0. So this guy is Q1 and Q0. Well, here we already have a Q1 here. All right, so this is, we could label this if we wanted to. This is Q1 and this is not Q0. So we could take that Q1 down like so. And then we also have Q zero so this guy needs to also come in to our circuit there we go and that's q zero okay so that gets us our excitation functions our d, in, d inputs and now what about the output function the output function y is a and q zero and q one so it's a three input and gate so let's see here is here's your q1 
So let's have a three input AND gate here. This will be our output Y. And we also need Q0. That's here. And we also need A. And A is already over here. So over like so. And then that would be our circuit. It would implement this state machine. Now, could we have developed a simpler circuit? And how would we know in advance that we could have, right? Well, we could have, right, we said from the very beginning, we were just given these states, and we weren't assigned actual state variables, actual Q values to these states. We were able to just do that on our own, and this was arbitrary. Maybe we could have made state assignments that would have led to a simpler implementation. So we'll come back to these uh, questions in a future lecture. So here we have our state diagram. This was a, the original form in terms of the switch and the warning signal. And then here is just a little more abstract notation where we assign state variables to these three states, Q1 and the Q0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And then here are the transitions caused by the input A and then the corresponding output Y. Okay, and where A was considered to be the switch and the output Y is the warning signal. Okay, so let's, uh, let's fire this circuit up. Here's our A and our clock. Oh, so we are starting out, this, here's a Q1 and Q0, so we're in state 00. Well, uh, oh, let's do a transition there. Okay, now we're in state 001. Okay, so if A is 0, we should remain in that state, and the, and the output should be 0. Oh, yes, we, that's true. Now, if A goes to 1, then the next clock cycle, we should go to state 10 to state two, and the out should be, output should be zero. So there we go. Yes, and so we're in the state one zero. The output is zero. Now if we keep A at one, we should just remain in that state. We should just stay there, all the clock cycles. Okay, now if we have A is equal to zero, we should go to state one one, and the output should be zero. So A is zero. Next rising edge, yes, we go to the, out, the state one one, and the output is zero. And now if there, if we now set uh, A to 1, we should stay in that state. And we should turn on the warning signal, the output Y should go to 1. Finally, if in that state A goes to 0, then we should output 0 and go to state 0, 1. Yes, output zero and go to state zero one, and then we can repeat. All right, so our circuit indeed implements uh, this uh, uh, state uh, state diagram. Um, we got there by turning the state diagram into a state table and the state table into logic functions for the excitation, the input to the D flip flops, and then the output function.